To solve the problem, John Mockley, a physicist from the University of Pennsylvania, proposed building a giant electronic computer that could figure charts in minutes, not hours. The Army, desperate for a device to help them win the war, reluctantly committed to the proposed cost of half a million dollars. Mockley and a brilliant graduate student in electrical engineering, Presper Eckert, set to work constructing ENIAC, the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. Many times larger than Colossus, nothing close to ENIAC had ever been conceived. Nearly 100 feet long and weighing 30 tons, it contained almost 70,000 resistors, 10,000 capacitors, 6,000 switches, and 18,000 delicate vacuum tubes. Vacuum tubes burn out just like light bulbs. In a machine that contained 18,000 vacuum tubes, at least one had to be replaced every few minutes. After two years of intense work, the team completed ENIAC, three months after the Japanese surrender. Although it wasn't finished in time to help win the war, ENIAC was a marvelous machine. It could perform up to 5,000 additions, 357 multiplications, and 38 divisions every second. The interesting thing about the ENIAC was that it had a general purpose capability. It could be reconfigured to solve other problems. And there was never any problem finding work for the ENIAC to do. All the armed services clamored for time on the machine. Uh, industrial customers, university researchers wanted it. So it was kept busy right into the 1950s. By far the most complex machine of its time, ENIAC still lacked many of the qualities of a modern computer. Its memory was very primitive and could only store a maximum of 20 10-digit decimal numbers. It had to be laboriously rewired each time it was programmed and couldn't make logical decisions based on its calculations. But ENIAC had proven that computers could be constructed. Just before the end of the Second World War, John von Neumann, an advisor to Eckert and Mockley's ENIAC project, wrote a paper that was to greatly affect the next stage of computer design. Von Neumann possessed a photographic memory and was one of the principal scientists involved in the Manhattan Project. Von Neumann's paper delineated the structure of the modern computer. It was to have a processing unit, a controlling unit, memory, input and output. But most importantly, in the evolution of computers, it would hold its programming internally in its memory. Internally held programs give computers their power and versatility, because an internal program can modify what it does based on data or the results of computations. Von Neumann's paper proposed a machine that truly had a general purpose capability. In this paper, he described the attributes of a computer, how it ought to be organized logically. That is, it needed to have a central processor where the calculations would be performed, it needed to have a memory where the program and data would be stored, it needed to have an output unit, an input unit of some sort. He laid out the logical plan, the map, for a computer and pointed the direction for the future. The idea for storing programs internally was the last key to developing the true general purpose computer. But whether it was von Neumann's idea has long been hotly debated. Eckert and Mockley, who had worked with von Neumann, claimed they formulated internal programs as a natural part of their work building ENIAC. Although they couldn't stop and incorporate the idea into the machine. However, Eckert and Mockley weren't included as authors in the paper. They felt they had been betrayed. But realizing the computer might find itself useful in the business world, Eckert and Mockley formed their own computer company. They set to work on a machine they called the Universal Automatic Computer, UNIVAC. 
The UNIVAC, unlike previous one-of-a-kind machines built to solve scientific or military problems, could be programmed to serve many purposes. The UNIVAC was also the first computer to be mass-produced and sold commercially. The machine could be programmed for a variety of data processing tasks, such as payroll, inventory, and billing. Compact magnetic tape drives stored data and results were automatically printed. Still, very few people understood how useful a computer could be. That perception changed dramatically on election night 1952, when CBS used a UNIVAC to predict the outcome of the presidential race between Dwight Eisenhower and Adlai Stevenson. Opinion polls said the race was too close to call. The UNIVAC figured otherwise. Engineers fed the computer early results of selected eastern precincts, well before polls closed in the western states. Experts thought it was a tight race, but the UNIVAC predicted a landslide victory for Eisenhower. Even CBS didn't believe what the computer was saying and hesitated reporting the computer's results. But in the end, the UNIVAC was correct. The power and utility of the computer had been proven. After the success of UNIVAC, various companies began to see a future in computer development. IBM began to realize that computers would become smaller and less expensive and easier to use and that there would be a place in business for these machines and that indeed these machines might eventually replace punch card technology, their, their bread and butter. By the early 1960s, IBM dominated the large mainframe computer market. Business was becoming dependent on computers. The machines were getting smaller thanks to the switch from tube technology to transistors. And a race to the moon was about to make the computer smaller still.